Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is October the 6th, 2022. And today we're going to be taking a look at the purging of our sins. <laughs> now, we've already read this a couple of times, but we're going to do a little bit of an in-depth study. And it's because of all of this blood things, all of this blood that was in the temple. I don't know. I think that we should take a look at actually what the picture is. It, you guys already know it's it's very difficult for me to study the ear. I just I have a big problem with it. So we're going to take a look at what that purging was. We have a lot of scriptures to go through. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it. We are going to read through this again. <laughs> We've looked at this several times, but it's worth looking at again in depth. So let's get started. <laughs> this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought in unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed, two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. Now we know, just going back up here, we know that the two birds, one is going to represent Jesus, the one that is killed, the other is going to represent Satan, that is the scapegoat that's going to be sent away alive. I think we've discussed that already. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And, the, and he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. So the picture that's drawn here is there is one bird that's sacrificed. The man is already clean. He's already clean. So he goes to the priest. <laughs> he goes to the priest. One bird is killed. The blood from that bird is um, mixed with a few other symbolic elements. The scarlet, of course, representing the world because it's for the world to see, right? So and it's sprinkled, it's mixed with the hyssop, which is the cleansing property, and it's sprinkled upon the man. The hyssop is actually what is symbolic of purging the, the sin in this particular case, or the plague, I mean the plague in this particular case. But all of this is done is not because the man isn't clean. All of this is done so that the world can see that he's clean. He's gone through the process that was needed to verify that he is clean and that it is safe for him to come back into the camp. So that the people that are around him need not fear him. Okay? And of course he is going to... We'll do the seven day thing later, I suppose. Now let's go ahead and read it. Um, and it shall be, and he that is to be clean shall wash his clothes and shave off all his hair and wash himself in water and he shall be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. And it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave his hair off his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all the hair, all his hair he shall shave off and shall wash his clothes and he shall wash his flesh in water. And he shall be clean. So the best way to look at the seven days is as if it's a Sabbath day. Of course, it wasn't a full seventh day. He would have come in the first day. He would have waited six days. And then the seventh day, he would have been clean. The best way to look at that is if it's a Sabbath day. You just have to get there and then you are declared clean. You get to the seventh day and you're clean. Okay? <laughs> so, um... Okay, so let's look at our scriptures because it's not really, because if you haven't figured it out yet, 
those of you who are listening to me probably know that your sins aren't just poofed away because Jesus died. That wasn't the plan. It was never the plan. All of this has come about because the Catholics want to be able to forgive sin. That's what they want to be able to do. They need you, you to believe something that is outrageous that is not at all taught by the Bible. I'm not I take that back about the Catholics. A lot of churches do that. <laughs> but that's the biggest one. That's why I named them. But a lot of churches I well, I don't know. There may be other churches. Just in case there is, I take it back about the Catholics. But they need you to believe something outlandish about the scriptures so that they can they can teach you their false doctrines. Um, so let's get through these scriptures because I think I have 32. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So let's look at this word remission. Remission. Did I get the right one? Freedom, figuratively, pardon, deliverance, forgiveness, liberty, remission. Let's look up the word remission here. Let's see what it is. If someone who has had a serious disease, such as cancer, is in remission, or if the disease is in remission, then the disease has been controlled so that they are not as ill as they were. Brain scans have confirmed that the disease is in remission. So it's, it's, it's taken away. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's cured. It's taken away so that you have freedom figuratively to pardon. You have deliverance. Forgiveness is not the word. That's not that's not correct. Not in the sense that we understand it. But you have liberty and you have remission. You have a remission from your sins. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. I don't know if I looked this up, but let's look it up together. Cleanses us, but it doesn't say forgive. It doesn't say causes us to be forgiven. The word cleanse here is used, it just means cleanse. The same thing as was done in to, um, for the plague. He was pronounced clean, but he was already clean before. Your character, listen, your character is not going to miraculously change at the end. It won't. If that's what you believe, you, you're, you're in trouble. Because he's not going to snap his fingers and make you into a good person. You have been given remission of your sins so that you can function as a witness for Christ as a holy person so that your conscience can be clear and you can believe and move forward from there. That's what why Jesus died. So that you can have time to perfect your character and live as a godly person so that you can become a godly person. If God could snap his fingers and make you into a perfect person, he would have done that for Satan. He made Satan perfect. He was the perfect angel. He was the most beautiful, the most beautiful voice. He was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. You know what that iniquity is? It's called a choice. <laughs> it's called freedom of choice. You have a, well, no, let me stop. I forgot the, that, that's, sorry, bad choice of words. It's called, it's called choice. <laughs> You have a right to make a choice for good or for bad. And Satan chose to make a choice for bad. If you choose to continue to make choices for bad, then you are developing a character and a love for, for wrong. If you continue to make a choice for good, then you are following the laws of God because that's what's good. And you are developing your character for heaven. But you have to be clean first. 
you have to be clean. You have to be clean before that blood is sprinkled upon you. It's not going to do anything other than take away your conscience, your guilty conscience of sin. <laughs> the one that would have to be purged every single year. Oh, actually, we're right here. Let's start from the beginning. <laughs> For the law having a, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which were offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect for the why because every year they would have to come back <laughs> for then would they not have ceased to be off let's start up for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscious of sins once they had been cleansed they would not have had to come back every single year for the day of atonement we no longer have to be cleansed cleansed every single year on the day of atonement we don't have to do that but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin so let's look at this takeaway here because they're going to use a different word for takeaway down here so this takeaway is to remove, to cut, to cut off, to take away. So it's just to cut off something. Like I think this was the word that was used saying that he Peter cut off his ear or something like that I'm, let's just check real quick he, yeah he smelled off his ear no way that was someone else's <laughs> okay anyway let's continue on um where I don't know if I want to read all of this we have so much let's just skip that for it, would, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Then, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And we know sanctified is to make, being sanctified is to be made holy. To make holy, to be purified or consecrate, to venerate, hollow, sanctify. And every peace, priest standing daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. I think we need to read the rest of this. Let's just read it real quick, just to keep it in context. Um, wherefore, when he come into the where, wherefore when he cometh into the world, he saith, "Sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no no sacrifices." They just added that in there, and burnt offerings, <laughs> thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above, when he said, Sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offering. See how many words they added in to try and push this offering on you? Sorry about that. Let me read it again. Above, when he said, Sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Lord, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second, by the which we are sanctified through the offerings of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. One time cleared everything out. And every priest standeth daily, ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. So now let's look at this word. including its alternate to remove all around 
that is unveil, cast off, anchor figuratively to exp expatiate. Remember that word? To take away. Let's look this word up again. To expatiate. XP8. XP8. I've been saying it wrong. <laughs> okay. If you expiate guilty feelings or bad behavior, you do something to indicate that you are sorry for what you have done. It seemed that Alice was expiating her father's sin with her charity work. So, expiate is what it's saying that this. Hold on. It's saying here that the sacrifices and the offerings were meant to expiate sins. To expiate is to um, act in a certain way. It's a behavior that you show to, to show the world that you are sorry for the sins that you have committed. So rather than doing charity work to expiate her father's sins, we believe in Christ. That's our expiation. That is how our sins are taken away here and taken away there. It's the same thing. It's, it's the same paragraph. Even. <laughs> our sins are expiated. It's just a symbol to everyone else to show that we that we follow the laws of God and that we follow Christ. So there's more to it, of course, because uh, let me go back and make sure that was uh, okay. There's more. I think I marked this for later. Let's leave that. We're going to come back to that later, I think. Okay, so. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. This is the same word, take away. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I put that in there. I guess to use the same word. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you what take away was. And we looked it up already. But let's read it since I put it in here. If any man shall take away from the words of this book of his prophe prophecy. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And out of the holy city. And from the things which are written in the book. So taking away doesn't change anything. If you take away the words out of this book. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the truth. <laughs> Okay, it's still the same. There is a word for forgiveness that um, was noticeably missing from that book when I was, from that section that I was reading to you about the sacrifice of Jesus. So I looked up the word forgiveness to see where it was used in the Bible. This is the Old Testament, well, this is not the Old Testament word. But this is one of them. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal with them in the, in the time of thine anger. So it says, forgive not thine, their, their iniquity. So he has the iniquity separated from the blotting out of the sin. The forgiveness of the iniquity. Which is a different word than the other. This is the word. Okay. This is the word for expiate. That's why I put that in there. Because the same word is used. In, the, in Hebrew. Figuratively to expiate. But it has here. Forgive not their iniquity. Neither. Blot out their sins from thy sight. This right here would be the semblance, would be the the words that would be used for forgiveness of sins. 
This is something entirely different. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. This word is one of the words used for, for forgive instead of the previous word, which I'll show you again. Forgive 3722. In the Old Testament, five five four five year, same book even. So he knew what the word, he knew the word that he was using. Forgive, and he meant, don't um, expiate their iniquity. Uh, forgive their, I will forgive their iniquity, and will remember their sins no more. So he's going to forgive it. And then he's going to cast it behind them as far as the east from the west. <laughs> it's not going to be remembered anymore. And forgive. This is the word for forgive in the New Testament. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is the word for forgive. I hope I don't have a lot of these examples in here, but I think I have quite a few. <laughs> Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin... Oh, I like the wrong one. And blasphemy shall be forgiven. Here it is, unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So it's two. Let's look this up here. It's G863 in the New Testament. Um, to send forth various application, cry, forgive, forsake, lay aside, leave. Omit, put, send away, remit, suffer, yield up. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? Here Jesus forgave the man's sins. Thy sins be forgiven thee. He forgave sins. If Jesus came to die, don't you think that the if Jesus was going to die for our sins, don't you think that the Pharisees would not be saying the Pharisees well the Pharisees they lie so much <laughs> I don't know if they were lying or if they truly believed it to be honest with you so maybe that's not a good example but I would think that if Jesus was going to come to die for our sins and rule they would not be saying only God could forgive sins but that's not really a good example. Pharisees didn't didn't know that much, actually. <laughs> Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance unto Israel, to Israel, and forgiveness of sins. No. Hold on. I think this is one of the might be one of the errors that I put in here for us because I put a couple of errors in here well let's look up repentance Compunction for guilt, reformation by implication, reversal of another's repentance. So if you repent, no, this isn't one of the errors, it's just the way that it's written. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Once they've repented, that's one of the prerequisites <laughs> to forgiveness of sins. Once you've repented, then you can have forgiveness. But you don't get one without the other. You have to perfect your character here. Now you don't... Listen, I've, I've said this before. Sitting um, 
if you let's say you 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 make a mistake and you sin or you think you sinned, okay? If you if you repent of that sin, you not being perfect yet, not having the law written on your hearts and on your minds, then you made a mistake. Your your sin was made by mistake. So not that that was real okay that was not real but <laughs> that that law in Leviticus that says only your trespasses that you do by mistake can be forgiven um, well it can be real I don't even have a problem with it you don't intentionally sin and if you do then you have repentance but it's considered a mistake either way <laughs> Because if you had a perfect heart, then that's what you would follow. You see, you're not made perfect yet. But most of the things that you guys think are sins are really not. Is they're just not sins. Repent therefore of this of thy wickedness and pray God if perhaps the thought of thy thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. The thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. But, okay, I, it has repent in here. So, we're good there. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, though this man, through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Look, let's look at justified. To render, that is to show a, show or regard as just or innocent, free, justified, to be righteous. Let's look at render. Render. You can use render with an adjective that describes a particular state to say that someone or something is changed into that state. For example, if someone or something makes a thing harmless, you can say that they render it harmless. It, it contains so many errors as to render it worthless. So you are regarded as innocent. And by him, all that believe are rendered innocent. You're not innocent. You are regarded as innocent from all things from which you could not be rendered by the law of Moses. Why could you not be rendered? Because it only happened once a year. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus now is serving as high priest. All things are and can be forgiven of you. I mean, if you will accept forgiveness. So you are rendered harmless. You're justified and then you're sanctified because you're rendered clean through the through the works of Jesus, then you can walk around as a holy person preaching the word of God without fear. To open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. <sighs> that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified. An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay, there's a there's a lot of steps in this. I should have okay. To open their eyes and to turn them from the darkness to light, and from the power of Satan's being the darkness, unto God which is the light, 
that they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's the that's the end promise. And inheritance amongst them which are sanctified. This is the first promise. <laughs> this is our promise. Forgiveness of sins. See, they're talking about the Gentile here. The Gentiles. So, Gentiles need forgiveness of sins so that they can receive the inheritance that's already promised to us who are going to be preaching them the gospel. which And we have received it by faith that is in Jesus. Okay? And which we already went through. And I'm not going to go through again because we are at 30 minutes. <laughs> Even as David also described it, the, blas the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed the righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are, the, are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Let me see where we are here. Well, we have a lot of more verses to get through. Okay, let's look up imputed. Well, let's look it up here first. To take an inventory, that is to estimate. Is that right? Literally or figuratively conclude, despise, esteem, impute, lay. I love it when they define a word with the word. <laughs> Number, reason, reckon, suppose, think. Let's look up impute. If you impute something such as blame or crime to someone, you say that they are responsible for it or are the cause of it. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed the righteousness, saying that we are the cause for our righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. They're listed as separate here. But, Let me see what this word covered is here. Sins are concealed. So if you make it to heaven, basic, he, basically, unto whom God imputed the righteousness, saying that they are righteous so that they can go to heaven without works, because we know that we have faith in Jesus for that. Saying blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven. They first have to be forgiven. Which is not the promise that we have from Jesus. And whose sins are covered. Once, they're, once they are forgiven. They're covered. He, he remembers them no more. We've already seen that. I have some repeated stuff in here. Okay. I have another sin one. But we're just going to have to stop here. Let me see how many more I have on sin. There's too many. <laughs> oh, that looks like it's the last one. Okay, so let's do this one and then we'll start in Colossians in the next video. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Um, let's look up redemption. <laughs> redemption is the promise I think that we have. I can't remember the words anymore. Too much. I've done too much. <laughs> Ransom in full, that is figuratively riddance or specifically Christian salvation, deliverance, redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Well, that's a different word for sins. According to the riches of his grace. So we're not going to do this because that's not even the word for sin. And I don't remember. Oh, forgiveness of the side slip. Okay, that's why I put it in here. Um, because this is a different way of saying that um, we have... Um, 
what was the word that was used? Uh, I, wrote, I, I have it on the link here. Remission. That's a different way of saying we have remission from our sins. Because we have forgiveness of this word sins right here. It means to slip. It means if we make a mistake. A side slip, a lapse, or a deviation, unintentional error, or a willful transgression. Oh, how did I not see that before? <laughs> Even if we have a willful transgression, um, a fall or a fault or a offense or a sin or a trespass, we can still go back to God. <laughs> if we repent. Now, you may not get repentance depending upon how great that transgression is, of course. But we have forgiveness for that. And it's part of our remission of sins. Okay, so we're going to stop here. And we will pick up in the next video.